Today is Wednesday, October 22, 2014, the 295th day of the year. There are 70 days remaining until the end of 2014. On this day in 1926, J. Gordon Whitehead sucker punches magician Harry Houdini in the stomach in Montreal, precipitating his death. Houdini, 52 years old, born in Hungary in 1874 as Eric Weiss, is the most famous performing escape artist and illusionist in the world, having begun his career as a magician at the age of 17 in 1891 in Dime Museum. Museums, circus sideshows, he becomes known as the Handcuff King and claims the ability to escape from any form of handcuff. In 1900, at 26, he tours England, Scotland, the Netherlands, Germany, France, Russia. In England, unable to book a suitable venue for his act, Houdini gives a demonstration of his handcuff escape act at Scotland Yard in London, escaping not only from the cuffs, but from a jail cell into which he's locked, so bamboozling the police and the assembled newspaper reporters that he becomes a sensation and books the Alhambra Theatre, performing for six months before sold-out audiences, expanding his act to include escapes from locked chains, straitjackets underwater, suspension by ropes from skyscrapers. He famously devises an act whereby he escapes not only handcuffs, but chained with padlocks and suspended upside down within a water-filled milk can, requiring him to hold his breath for several minutes at a time. In Moscow, Houdini escapes from a locked Siberia-bound police van. He says, had he failed, he'd have to travel all the way across Russia to Siberia, where the only key is kept. He's a headliner in vaudeville for years, touring throughout America from 1907 through the teens and into the 20s, leaving his handcuffed act behind because of imitators stealing his stuff, devising ever more elaborate escapes. Researcher J.C. Cannell says Houdini's escapes include nailed packing crates sometimes lowered into water, riveted boilers, wet sheets, mail bags, and even the belly of a whale that is washed ashore in Boston. In Scranton, Pennsylvania, local brewers nail him into a barrel filled with beer. On this day in 1926, Houdini is performing in Montreal. Students from McGill University have come backstage to meet the great illusionist. Two of the visiting students, Jock Price and Sam Smilovitz, tell the same story during a later investigation. A third visiting student, identified as husky young J. Gordon Whitehead, asks Houdini if it's true he can sustain blows to his midsection without feeling pain. When Houdini gives the young man permission to go ahead and try, but before having a chance to brace himself, Whitehead delivers a series of sharp, below-the-belt punches. Houdini goes on that evening to perform his act in great pain. For two days, he suffers, then consults a doctor who tells him he has peritonitis, an acute inflammation of his appendix, and requires immediate surgery. But Houdini begs off, saying the show must go on. On October 24, 1926, he performs at the Garrick Theater in Detroit with a 104-degree fever. It's his final performance. Houdini passes out on stage during the show. He's revived, then hospitalized, but it's too late for surgery. His appendix has burst, doubtless a result of the backstage pummeling he receives on this day. Houdini lingers for a week or more, then dies October 31, 1926. Early 20th century magician, escape artist, illusionist, film actor, and producer, debunker of frauds. Harry Houdini writes, I know, as everyone knows, that the easiest way to attract a crowd is to let it be known that at a given time and a given place, someone is going to attempt something that in the event of failure will mean sudden death. That's what attracts us to the man who paints the flagstaff on the tall building, or to the human fly who scales the walls of the same building. From Rutland, Vermont, this is Richard Alcott speaking.